Raise your hand if you're having trouble. So this is a division problem, correct? We have our divisor and we have our dividend. Basically, actually, what the question is asking is, is this a factor, correct? Or actually, no, it's a, but that's what the question is asking. So real quick, I just want to go through this. If remember, remember you guys did factor trees? Right, like 4 times 3 and 2 times 2, right? You guys remember like a factor tree? Now, what was impo what's important about all those factors? Why do we call them factors? Well, there's some kind of characteristic that they all have in common. Right, they all divide into the, the number 12, right? All of these different factors all divide into 12, correct? They all divide into it evenly, yes? Evenly. So what the question is asking, is asking is not actually just do a division, but what actually this question is asking from the textbook is, is x squared plus 1 a factor of this? Now, if you know that that's a factor, then that means that it evenly divides, meaning we're going to have a remainder of 0. So if we have a remainder of 0, it is a factor. Yes? And what else do you guys remember about factors? Factors we can always write as, what can we find using the factors? No. Dun, dun, dun. OK, real quick, before I even get into this x plus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. Do you guys agree with me? Those are all factors of the polynomial? Yes? What happens when we have our factors equal to 0? We apply the zero. 0 product property, right? So x, x equals negative 1, x equals 3, x equals negative 4. So if those are all factors, those are all the zeros, right? Or the solutions, or the real x-intercepts, and so forth. So if this is a factor, what can I determine from that? What the? I know if this is a factor, then I can set it equal to 0 to find the zeros, right? I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I just want you guys to understand that if this is a factor, you can find the zeros from that, OK? But before we get to that, we want to understand, is this first a factor? So we're going to set it up using long division. x squared plus 1 equals 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Is there just an x, a linear x? Is there just a linear x, Anthony? No, thank you. So since there is not a linear x, I am going to substitute in a 0x. So if you have any missing terms, I think it'd be easier for you guys to substitute them with a 0x rather than cleaning out your nails. Okay? So if you have 0 times x, because what's 0 times x? 0, zero right? So in reality, it's not affecting or not changing the problem. Does everybody agree with me? OK. So, but I want to represent this, and I'll show you why. So when you're using, when you're dividing this into all of this, we're going to use the same process we did um, with long division of numbers. But what you're going to do is you're only going to use your x squared as your divisor. That's it. You're not going to use the rest of the polynomial. Make sure also, I forgot to mention, make sure that your polynomials are in standard form. Do you guys agree with me this is in standard form? Yeah. Right? And that's kind of like why I did that. Like I included that one. You want to have all the variables accounted for. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Right? We don't really need to write the x to the 0, though. But you want to have everything accounted for. Is this in standard form? Yes, the highest power is first. OK. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to divide this into the first term. Does x squared divide into 3x to the fourth? Yes. I'm going to try to go through this. That goes into there 3x squared times. Does everybody agree with me? That's why we did, these, that's why we did the problems at the beginning of class. Yes? No? If you don't understand, all I said was 3x to the fourth divided by x squared. Right? Well, 1 goes into 3, 3 times, x to the 4 minus 2, 3x squared. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your quotient. And remember how we multiplied our quotient by our number, right? Well, now we're going to multiply it by both of our numbers. So I have 3x squared times x squared. 3x squared times x squared is 3x squared. 3x squared times 1 is 3. Oops, I'm sorry. Three, that's to the fourth, right? 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. 
So I don't want to put it here. Because guys, can you add x squared plus like x cubed? Or you can, can you subtract those? No, they're not like terms. So when I do 3x squared times 1, I get 3x squared. So I'm going to want to place that under the x squared, because those are your like terms. Three x squared times x squared is three x to the fourth. Three x squared times one is three x squared. I don't have anything for this x cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use zero as a place value. Sometimes you'll have place values. Sometimes you won't need place values. Yes? How do you get the plus 12x squared to make it a negative 12x squared? Oh, that's a plus, isn't it? Yeah. I just wrote it down wrong. Yeah. Does everybody follow me? It's what I did. I just use this as a place value. Does 0x cubed, it just represents 0, right? It's not changing the problem. So now I subtract the rows. So what I would recommend that you guys do is put these in parentheses. Why put them in parentheses? Because this is where everybody makes their mistakes. Everybody. You need to subtract every single one of these terms. Every single one of these terms you need to subtract. So 3x to the fourth minus 3x to the fourth is what? 0x zero. Zero to the fourth, which is just 0. Negative 4x cubed minus 0x cubed. Well, if you have a negative, if you're subtracting 0, it's just going to be your negative 4x cubed. Does that make sense? If you didn't have a 0, though, it would kind of be a little bit hard to like understand what you're doing. So that's why I use the place value. You don't have to use the place value. But I think it makes sense. So negative 4x cubed minus 0x cubed is just a negative 4x cubed. Now, the reason why I put the x squared here is because I can subtract these, right? You couldn't subtract an, an x cubed from an x squared, right? You can only multiply, divide when they have different powers. You can't add and subtract when they have different powers. So 12x squared minus 3x squared is 9x squared. 12x squared minus 3x squared. Does everybody see me? Nobody's asking me any questions, so I'm just trying to go as slow as I can. Yes? You would always be able to include a thing, but if you can't, then that's the end of the factoring. It'll only go in there so many times. Yes? So if you remember 12x minus 3x, the way that I like to think of that, you're not dividing. 12x divided by 3x is just 9. You're correct. Or it's just 4. Right? That divides to 4. That divides to 1. This, think of this as like 12 apples minus 3 apples is what? 9 apples. Correct? So you don't get rid of the x's. You're not like subtracting the x's. Does that make sense? So that works with division, but not with subtraction. You're combining the terms. Yes? Um, can we, like, AMF years, question off? Can you do the, um, add the 0x to the first power plus 5 at the end of that, or you just leave that alone? You can. You can subtract these and put zeros in for here, but I think that gets a little bit too confusing. So I just like to keep, she was asking, can I, like, subtract these as well? And you could. You could put a 0x here and a 0, and a zero and subtract them. I just think it gets more confusing. I only want to take, use these numbers when I have to. Okay? So now I have my new quotient, or my new divisor that I brought down, or dividend. So now I do the same process again. x squared divides into negative 4x cubed how many times? Negative 4x, negative 4x times. Does everybody see how I got that? If you don't, please raise your hand, because I'm going to move on. OK, so negative 4x cubed divided by x squared. Well, again, there's a 1 in front of there. Negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4. x cubed minus x, or x cubed 
divided by x squared is x cubed minus 2, which is x to the first power. Right? You subtract the powers. Kelsey, does that make sense? Okay. So now I do the same thing. I take my quotient and I multiply it by both of the terms. So negative 4x times x squared is negative 4x cubed. Then negative 4x times 1 is what? Negative 4x. Can I subtract a negative 4x from the x squared? No. So I'm going to put it over here. So now I have to use this, right? So I'm going to bring this down. Then do I have anything for this 9x squared to subtract it from? No. So I'm going to use a place value of 0x. Now again, I put in parentheses. And I subtract. So we go through this again. Negative 4x cubed minus a negative 4x. Remember, a double negative is a positive. So it's really subtracting a positive, which they're exactly the same. And that gives you 0x cubed. Yes, Kaylee? Yeah, it's supposed to be a squared. Sorry. OK. Now, since I included this place value, it's much easier to subtract or to see, understand the subtraction. 9x squared minus 0x squared is 9x squared. And then 0x minus a negative 4x. When you minus a negative, that is a same as adding. So 0x minus a negative is now going to give you a positive 4x. Yes, Melissa? I inserted that because I did not have anything to subtract the 9x squared from. So I just inputted that myself. Because 0x squared is just a 0, right? So it's just, it's just a way to understand the subtraction. It's not really like change anything. OK, now we do the same thing again. x squared divides into 9x squared how many times? 9. Then we go back through one last time. 9 times x squared. 9 times 1. So we have 9 times, um, 9 times x squared is 9x squared. 9 times 1 is 9 times 1 is 9. I don't have anything to subtract the 9, so I'm going to bring down the 5. So I only like to bring down the numbers when I have to. Do I have something to subtract the 4x from? No, so I'm just going to input a value, 0x. Okay, Then I subtract. Again, put in parentheses, because this is where everybody makes mistakes. 9x squared minus 9x squared is 0x, which is just 0. 4x minus 0x is 4x. And 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So. Then I do the same process again. Does x squared evenly divide into 4x? Uh-oh, no. Right? You can't have a larger power divide into um, a smaller power. So x squared doesn't divide into it. So then guess what this is? The remainder. So how do you so is x squared plus 1 a factor? No, it doesn't evenly divide into it. Here's how you're going to write your answer. You're going to write this as the quotient is now um, 3x squared minus 4x plus 9 plus you're going to take your remainder and write it over your divisor. So your answer, your answer is because this is what doesn't work, right? But that's what you need to do. So therefore, I'm just telling you how you write your answer. You'd write your quotient. If there's, no rema if there's a remainder, you take the remainder and write it over your divisor. Okay, That's what we would like to look at if there's a remainder. If there's not a remainder, you just write the quotient, right? And you're done. But if there's a remainder, we're going to write the quotient or the remainder over the divisor. Yes, that just took me 14 minutes to go through that. So.